as soon as it was known to the public in ayodhya that dashrath had decided to anoint rama as the crown prince there was rejoicing the entire city and its people were wide awake in the early hours of the morning the traders had opened their shops early as in festive times to sell goods dancers performed on the street corners while singers sang songs to the sheer delight of listeners the people gathered in homes and at the town squares animatedly talked of rama's abhishek the streets decorated with flowers and incense sticks lighted at various places bathed the city in sweet fragrances with roaring hordes assembled to witness the raja abhishek ayodhya resembled indrapuri so writes valmiki his description of the social ambience of the city being made ready for a festivity is realistic and it reflects the culture of those times but the story took another turn a vicious turn while the city of ayodhya rejoiced in festive celebrations kakee's chamber resounded with mantra's voice kakee was the youngest queen of dashrath and being young she was the favorite she was voluptuous reportedly and she had given birth to bharat a brilliant prince but she also loved ram however nothing could stop her maid mantara by name to poison kakee's ears addressing the queen who was lying in her bed mantara said oh fool wake up an unprecedented misfortune is about to befall you you lie totally unaware of the events unfolding in the court your beloved king has always professed absolute devotion to you and pretended that he would hand over the reins of his kingdom to you or your son you have been boasting of his fidelity wake up and see how like a stream running dry in summer your good fortune has been destabilized as it on the verge of disappearing mantra was a maid who had accompanied kakee dashratha's third wife and a favorite when she had come to ayodhya after marriage she was a hunchback and was the queen's confidante standing on the roof of kakee's palace late in the evening she noticed ayodhya being decorated for some sort of celebration she noticed the brahmin priests chanting with joy and musicians playing on diverse instruments she heard the loud echo of veda recitations and saw elephants and horses being dressed in finery further she noticed rama's nurse standing on the roof of kaushalya's palace dressed in yellow silk and looking cheerful on inquiry rama's nurse informed mantara of the intended raja abhishek of shri ram it is seen that her to the core on hearing this news the hunchback rushed to the chambers of her mistress and addressed her in a loud voice she continued you lie with your eyes closed in your chambers and the city is getting ready for your loss tomorrow the king will anoint rama as his successor i feel hurt and sorry for you and bharat for me it is like burning in the fire of hell of fear and apprehension your husband talks of dharma of truth and duty but see he is a crook he has been outwardly polite to you because you are young voluptuous desirable but he is wicked at heart you trust him like an innocent fool he makes love to you but is doing everything to oblige kaushalya he has deliberately sent bharat away in your son's absence he wants to anoint rama as yuvraj tomorrow morning wake up a woman if this happens you will be devastated beyond repair but kaikai was pleased at the king's intention to anoint ram 
handing over a precious ornament as the reward to Manthara for being the harbinger of such good tidings. The beauteous queen said, I do not differentiate between Ram and Bharat. I am delighted at hearing of Rama's intended anointment. But Mantra was not going to give up so easily. She retorted, you appear to be happy at this sad news, you are a fool. I warn you to protect your interests and your sons before it is too late. You do not differentiate between Ram and Bharat, but remember a stepson is the enemy of his stepmother. Be wise to my advice. If Rama gets the kingdom, he will become strong and powerful enough to uproot both of you, his potential rivals. In Lakshmana, he has a devoted and brave follower. I shiver at the thought of how Rama, who is skilled in every aspect of politics, will treat Bharat. You will be a mate to Kaushalya, that oldie, when her son becomes the king. You will not be able to live this insult, my queen. Bharat will stand in the court as a lowly courtier. Rama will not treat him as his equal because he is a rival. That is the way of the world, my queen. The king has deliberately planned to hand the kingdom over to Rama in Bharat's absence. See how clever he has been. He made your son go to his maternal uncle's house. I suggest that Rama be banished from the kingdom and Bharat be appointed as the king's successor. Think over what I am saying, O oh my queen. Valmiki writes, Kakei tried to overrule Mantara's hysteric lamentation and alleviate her fears, but to no avail. Her insecurities as a mother and the fear of losing the place of the favorite queen of the king hindered her rationality. Ultimately, she came round and asked Mantara how to go about obeying the king as well as achieving Rama's banishment and installation of Bharat as the king of Ayodhya. Mantra was ready with an answer. She had done her thinking, her planning completely. She said, you had accompanied your husband in the battle against the Rakshasas when he assisted Indra. He was critically wounded in that operation and had lost consciousness in the middle of the battlefield. Acting as his charioteer at that critical moment, you drove him to safety, away from the battlefield. At that time, the king had granted you two favors, which you had not redeemed then. The time has come when you can encash those two boons and ask that Bharat be made his successor, that Rama be exiled immediately into Dandakaranya for 14 years, nothing less. During Rama's absence, Bharat will inculcate the goodwill of the masses and firmly establish his rule. My queen, I suggest you now change into dirty worn-out clothes and roll on bare earth in the cope of heaven, the chamber meant for showing your anger. When the king arrives, do not talk to him, nay, do not even look at him nor acknowledge his presence. Let him not touch your body. Weep loudly, cry, roll on the earth. You have been his favorite. If he sees you in the disheveled state, he won't be able to refuse your request. He will try to placate you with jewels, pearls, gold and precious goods. Do not yield to anything. Remind him of his promise of two boons. Tell him that he has to prove his devotion to truth and commitment. Take a moral stand. Take a stand of dharma, duty, his commitment to his words. Once you have firmed his will, ask him to anoint Bharat tomorrow and simultaneously vanish Ram for 14 years. My queen, the second request is the most important. Rama must be removed from the kingdom to enable the people to accept Bharat as their ruler. It is only in his absence that Bharat can consolidate his hold on the masses and the kingdom. Valmiki writes, Arguing thus, Mantara made the undesirable seem desirable. 
to Kekai. In her twisted mind, the queen marveled at Mantra's wisdom and said, You have talked about my interests most wisely. I shall not overrule your advice. If it was not for you, the king would have succeeded in his devious plan. I could never have seen through his game. We end this video here and take up the rest of the fascinating story in the next video. Thank you for your kind visit.